I thank the Minister Mentor for giving us perspective at a point when we needed it, all of us. Perspective that can only come from a person of his wisdom and his experience. He said that the pledge is not an ideology, but an aspiration, a timely reminder. And I completely agree with the amendment that he has proposed because it is in keeping with my own objectives in moving this motion. While Minister Mentor Lee highlights the realities that we have to be cognizant of, I'm sure he would agree with me that the day we stop believing in the aspirations and working towards them is the day we cease to make real progress. So while reality sometimes will bog us down, will frustrate us, I think we must continue to believe that we can strive towards these aspirations which could appear extremely distant at this present moment. It was precisely, precisely this commitment to the aspirations of equality that drove our government to ensure that ethnic minority groups and their needs would be given special attention. It may sound paradoxical, but moves like affirmative action are indeed motivated to attain the aspiration of equality, an aspiration that's captured in our pledge. To conclude, let me briefly clarify three key points I made in my speech that appears to have perhaps been misunderstood. Firstly, ethnic self-help groups. I am not at any point advocating doing away with them. On the contrary, I did highlight the good work done by Mandaki, Sinda, CDAC, and the European, Eurasian Association. I also highlighted that I have served on the executive committee of Sinda for the past 12 years, and I'm very committed to what Sinda is doing because firsthand I've seen the good work it has done on the ground and the way the ground, the Indian community has benefited. All I'm asking for was to find was for us to find more ways to address the inadvertent signal we could be sending to the ground, which I've sensed, especially to the young, that the creation of these ethnic-based self-help groups could go contrary to the spirit of the pledge insofar as, look, insofar as wanting a multiracial society. That's all I'm asking for, to rationalize and deal with some of the contradictions that may be perceived on the ground. Democracy and justice. I'm not saying that the government is stuffing ballot boxes or doing things that are unconstitutional. I was highlighting a lingering perception that I sensed on the ground that politically it's not a level playing field. And if we don't address this, there'll be growing cynicism, especially amongst our youth, who will choose to express their displeasure through angry postings in the net, which is not useful. Thirdly, economic progress and happiness. I did not say economic prosperity is not important and that it should be put on the back burners, not at all. It would be naive to, to, to promote an argument of that nature. What I was highlighting was that national economic progress must result in happiness for the individual. And this may not always be the case. My intention in moving this motion was not to take shots at the government or its policies. It must be evident in my speech that I have a healthy regard for our government and appreciation for what we have achieved and that we should not take that for granted. My motivation is simple. As a citizen of this country, I'm deeply concerned about the level of rootedness and the latent threats to harmony, that if these two issues are not adequately addressed, we may not succeed as a nation, a people. For this, we need an emotional anchor or a collective reflex for which I am confident our national pledge would serve as a reference point. I'm glad that we have had the chance to have this discussion. I do believe it is useful, and I do believe it will provoke further discussion on the pledge and the importance of some of the tenets of the pledge on the ground. I think it's important for us to move away from hardline positions and look a lot more at shared interests. 
and there are plenty of shared interests, even as we discussed and debated the various points. We can disagree on the substantive issue I raised, but I would find it very hard if members can't accept that we, as members of this House, do see the, and should see the importance of reaffirming our commitment to the key tenets of the National Pledge. I'm confident that the House will support the motion, the amended version of the motion, and once again my sincere thanks to members for actively participating in the debate on this motion and provoking thought and discussion on the National Pledge in society. Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, I thank you.